So this is an MC70, a less common motor control board that you may find when scrapping a treadmill. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to hack it to work outside of the treadmill without having to use the cumbersome treadmill control panel. Greetings fellow DIYer and welcome to my video. So before we get started, I want to give you a little bit of history. We have an MC60 here. Of course, this is the MC70. And this is an MC2000. And the reason that I want to show you all three of these boards is you hack them the exact same way. All you need is a potentiometer. And you can run these boards outside of a treadmill. All three of these boards have labeling. They have spades coming off that say H, W, and L. Now on this MC2000, it's a different fitting, but it still says H, W, and L. And with a potentiometer, there are three posts. The W is always the middle post, and the H is on one side and the L is on the other. Now, not all potentiometers are created equally. And sometimes the H will be on this side and the L will be on this side. And more often than not, you have the H on this side and the L on this side. And you're probably thinking, great, how do I tell? Well, it's really pretty simple. If you hook the potentiometer up and you turn it clockwise and the motor comes on and begins to increase speed, then this is the H terminal and that is the L terminal. But if you turn it on and nothing happens and you go all the way around and then you begin to come back counterclockwise and it comes on, then you know that on that particular potentiometer, this is the H and this is the L. The good news is swapping these two over is really simple and is not that complicated. Now, there are specs for a potentiometer, so you gotta make sure you get the right one. I tried running this with a couple of different size potentiometers and a 2K potentiometer is going to be your best option. I also found that the 2K potentiometer worked well with both the MC60 and the MC2000. Interestingly enough, looking at the components and the circuit layout of this, it is very similar to an MC2100, which I don't even have shown here. I'm not a fan of the MC2100. They are prone to failure. And honestly, I do not know if this one is prone to failure or if it is fairly robust. Basically, there's not a lot of expense in getting it set up, and if you put it on your shop tool or other device and you end up burning out the board, you know, at that point you can go with an SCR or other options. So this video is not talking about the quality or the effectiveness of this compared to other control boards. Now, the MC60 is fairly robust. I've seen a lot of guys do a lot of things with the MC60, and it seems to work pretty well. The MC2000, this is the only one that I've seen and I've played with it quite a bit and it seems to be fairly robust. So I think those two are decent. Like I said, this seems a little similar to the MC2100 and that scares me just a little bit. But again, if this is what came in your treadmill, a 2K potentiometer is not that expensive. And then you can hook it up. If it fails, go with an AC voltage controller and a bridge rectifier. Couple of things that I do like. This is a very heavy duty heat sink. That's gonna dissipate heat really well. I'm very impressed by that. These capacitors are fairly large. I haven't looked at their configuration to see if they are interconnected or if they are working for different components on the board. But I would say it stands to reason that at least one of them is used to help smooth out the power that is going to the motor. Now there is one thing you need to know about this. This has soft start. All three of these have soft start. This one has soft start that can be eliminated by clipping a resistor. And this one has soft start that I was kind of able to eliminate by clipping a resistor, but not super effectively. Ultimately, on this unit, 
and this unit, you've got to deal with soft start. And that means that you cannot turn it on at any significant speed. You have to turn the potentiometer all the way to the slowest, and then you can begin to speed it back up. It's not a big deal in a lot of cases because if you're using this on a shop tool, you're probably running it fairly slow to begin with and turning it down and coming back to it, not that hard, especially if your machine has some sort of RPM meter on it. One other thing that I find a little concerning about this board, well, not concerning, but it is something to consider, is this is definitely a more modern board. You can tell by the micro components that are soldered in throughout. And the average person is not going to easily be able to replace those. If you do have a failure on this board, unless you are really good with electronics, at that point, you probably wouldn't be coming to my channel to get information. Your only option is to pay to have it professionally fixed. And so that's just something to keep in mind. Again, I view this board as something you use because you have it. And if I was using it and it was a tool that was important to me to keep running, I probably would order an AC voltage controller and bridge rectifier to have as a spare in case it failed. Ultimately, the goal in this video is not to tell you the shortcomings of this board or to tell you that it's great or anything like that. All I'm showing you how to do is to hook it up and be able to use it without the treadmill control panel. So the first thing we have to hook up is the potentiometer. And again, you've got H, W, and L. Typically the W is white, although when I soldered this wire on, all I had was blue. And this is labeled red, white, and black. Hooking it up is pretty simple. The red wire goes to the H. The blue wire goes here, although it's labeled white, like I said. And the black wire goes to L. And those stand for high, low, and wipe. And some potentiometers are labeled H, W, and L so that you know where it needs to go. All right, let's get these other two boards out of the way and see about hooking this the rest of the way up. On this side, we have the AC inputs coming in and they are labeled on the board as white and blue. And that is something to consider if your motor has blue wires. Now, it is not required that you hook them up, but it is actually probably a pretty good idea because those blue wires, they always go on the AC side and they are connected to a thermal fuse inside the motor. Basically, if this motor gets too hot, it's going to cut the power to everything. So first, let me show you how to hook it up without the blue wires, and then we will circle back and I'll show you what needs to change if running the blue wires. First thing, we have a red and a black wire coming out of the motor. And you can see positive and negative labeled here on the board, and you've got them labeled red and black. Then on this side, I've got a power cord, currently not plugged in. You don't ever want it to be plugged in when you are wiring stuff up. And it just so happens that the power wire coming in is blue. However, in a lot of cases, that would be the black wire. And the blue wires are always used on the black side of the cord. So this component right here is an on-off switch. And this wire could have been colored black, could have been colored blue. Either or, what's important is the white and then either blue or black. So we're going to plug the blue one in here. We're going to plug the white one in here. We're going to make sure that the switch is turned off because I don't want any crazy things to happen. We're going to make sure that the potentiometer is all the way down and then we're going to plug it in. Flip the switch, nothing happens. And we begin turning up the potentiometer. You heard that click. Units coming on. That is a reasonably slow speed. I can see a lot of uses at that speed, so I think that would work pretty well, and you can go up significantly faster. At those higher speeds, that motor is really cooking, so you've got a great range of speed with that. 
We'll go ahead and turn it off. That click sound you heard was this relay shutting off. And that is how you wire up an MC70 without using the blue wires. I showed you how to wire that without the blue wires because not all motors have blue wires. Typically, you can tell a motor's quality by whether or not it has blue wires. The weaker, more inexpensive motors have that blue wire setup coming out of them so that they don't overheat. The better quality high-end motors typically do not have blue wires. All right, that's turned off. Again, we're gonna be doing wiring, so I'm gonna unplug this cord. And with it unplugged, we're gonna hook up the blue wires. I'm gonna take this blue wire out, hook it into the male connector on this blue wire, and this last blue wire is going to connect over here. So that's it. That's all that has to happen. Basically, the blue wires on this motor are completing the circuit between the board and the power coming in. The most critical thing with blue wires is that they are always on the AC side. DC voltage, what's coming out in the red and black wires, creates a lot more heat and components are less tolerant to amperage. As an example, if you have a switch that's rated for both AC and DC, at 120 volts AC, it may be good for 15 or 20 amps. And at only 12 volts DC, it may only be good for five amps. And that's important to note because if you end up running the blue wires, you try to put them in line with the red or the black, it's not gonna work very well. You're probably gonna overtax these wires. They're gonna get hot. You're gonna create problems. And so it is not ever a good idea to hook the blue wires up on the DC side. All right, once again, we're gonna turn this all the way down. It's now plugged in. We're gonna flip the switch. And we're gonna slowly turn it on. Heard the click. That's that relay coming on and the motor's up and spinning. I do like how smooth this motor is spinning, and I do like the fact that it's not very noisy. That tells me that the power coming out of this board is probably fairly clean. And again, I'm not surprised by that because of the similarities that I see between this and the MC2100. One advantage that I see to the MC2100 is clean power, but again, the board itself is not very robust. And I don't know if this board is robust or if it has some of the same shortcomings as far as durability that the MC2100 has. I hope this helps. I hope this shows you the basics for wiring up an MC70 and how to get it all set up. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to put them down in the comments section and I would love to try and answer them for you. If you like what you've seen, please click like. If you'd like to see more, please subscribe. Thanks for watching.